Well, the women's NIT started last night in the Marriott Center. Yeah, Brady, how did it turn out? You know what, their last game they lost by 19 points in the WCC tournament to Gonzaga, so anything would have been better than that, but they did win on their home court last night. The next on sports, Hampson goes ham. The six foot seven junior dropped baloney on Idaho State to lead the Lady Cougs to the next round of the NIT. And return of the king. Cleveland fans had a much different reception for their former superstar. See if LeBron and company kept their 23 game win streak alive. Don't change that channel, sports is next. Coming off a 19-point loss to Gonzaga in the conference tournament, the BYU women's basketball team kicked off its NIT run last night against Idaho State. This one was all about Jennifer Hampson. The 6'7 junior knocked in a career-high 25 points. Here she is doing her best Kevin Garnett impression with the turnaround J. Getting it done on the defensive end as well. Look how she blocks the shot and collects the rebound. Young fellas, play attention. Hampson filled up the stat sheet with 12 boards and five blocks. Here's another one of those five. Get that weak stuff out of here. Then it's the immortal Haley Steed from the top of the key to put the game away. BYU advances with a 69-54 victory. Moving on to the men's NIT, Tennessee's 21,000-seat arena was almost empty last night as the two-seed volunteers hosted Mercer. Maybe the fans were just as disappointed as the players were that their team didn't make it to the big show this year. The Vols came out flat and Mercer actually walked away from Knoxville with a 75-67 win. And you know what that means. The Bears will be taking on our very own Cougs in the second round. The game will be Monday at 7 p.m. in the Marriott Center. General admission tickets go on sale today at 2 o'clock. Today's the second day of spring and the first time I get to talk about BYU baseball. The rain held off just long enough for the Cougs to host Kansas at Miller Park. We'll pick it up in the bottom of the fifth. Man on third for Jacob Hanneman, and he takes this one all the way to the wall. I'd say right about 388 feet. Hanneman showing off his wheels. He's in at third with a stand-up RBI triple, getting some love from his third base coach. Next batter, Brennan Anderson, taking the pitcher deep again. Hanneman scores easily. Cougs lead 3-0 after five. But the real story of this game was BYU pitcher Desmond Paulson. The Jayhawks were just a bunch of window shoppers. May I help you, sir? No thanks, I'm just looking. Paulson racks up four backward Ks on his way to a complete game shutout. Cougs win 3-zip. As the NBA postseason draws near, the Jazz remain on the outside looking in. Huge playoff implications in last night's game against the seventh place Rockets. James Harden getting things started with a straightaway three. Then the beautiful ball movement stops with Jeremy Lin to give, a 20, to give Houston a 23 point lead. Thomas Robinson with the dunk off the skip pass from the Beard and Houston gets the crucial 100 to 93 win. And with that, the Rockets take a three game lead over Utah in the race for the playoffs. The Jazz have just 14 games to go and sit a game and a half behind the Lakers. LeBron James returned to Cleveland for the fourth time since taking his talents to Miami. 23 game win streak on the line. Here's D Wade with the flush, no one home to defend it. Notice the score 36 33 Cleveland. Wayne Ellington hits the pull up J, part of a 19 to 1 run to close out the half. Second half, though, different story. LeBron stops and pops for three and then just stands there with an absolutely terrifying look on his face. James again for the lead. Good. The King had 19, 10, and 7 in the second half. Allen for three from the corner. And this will be the last chance for Cleveland. It's former Jazz shooting guard C.J. Miles to tie the game. No good. Well defended by Shane Battier and the Miami Heat. Climb out of a 27-point hole to beat the Cavs 98-95. The streak extends to 24 games. Okay, call me lazy, unmotivated, you know, whatever. But I haven't put together my bracket yet. Yours hasn't been messed up, has it? You didn't get yours in in time? Not I didn't yet. Do mine either. Uh, Maybe I, just, I have a philosophy, though. Give yourself 30 seconds, go through, just fill it all out, and just play for luck. The less you know, the better, to be honest. And I checked this morning. So far, all my picks are intact, but I might lose one pretty early, so we'll see. Well, the less you know, maybe I'll actually get a good bracket then. You'll probably be just fine. <laughs> Thanks, Brady.